Hey YouTube, I buy new stuff. So I hit 100,000 subscribers lately and YouTube send you this silver play button. I mean, I haven't hit PewDiePie's 50 million ruby play button or even hit the gold 1 million play button, but I'm really happy with my small accomplishment. So thanks for all the support. Anyway, I decided to make a red play button while I waited for the mail, which apparently takes a while. And I'm sure lots of my subscribers and different YouTubers will like to make this themselves. So I've made a video DIY tutorial. Without further ado, enjoy this short demo of the red play button I made from scratch and then I'll walk you through how I made it. Let's do it. So for part one of this tutorial, you're going to have to download the actual uh, 3D printing model from Thingiverse. So I'll just show you how to do that. Basically just search uh, YouTube play button. Now there's a variety of them on Thingiverse, so make sure you pick the right one. Um, I guess you can pick any one you like, but this one sort of resembles the real one as close as possible. So that's why I chose it. These are Creality 3D CR10 3D printers. They are really, really good, I recommend them. Um, you can grab them in the description if you like. Of course, once you print them off, you're not totally finished. We still want to smooth out those layers. As you can see, there's a bit of layering going on because 3D printers aren't perfect. So, you'll need to get some sandpaper. It depends how smooth you want to go. Um, I was sort of lazy on this one and you can see near the end that I have some lines in the design. I'm pretty happy with how it finished, but the, bet, the more work you put in right now, the better it will look. So I, I recommend putting in effort to actually get it nice and smooth with the sandpaper. So just keep sanding away, sanding away, and eventually you'll get it into a state where your fingers are nice and dusty and the lines feel a bit smoother. Eventually, 3000 years later, you'll be ready to prime it. So this is primer filler. It's automotive grade, so on chips on your car, it's supposed to fill it in. But basically, give it a few light layers of this. The point of this is to actually fill the remaining holes left. So after this is done, you'll give it another sand, as you'll see coming up. That was really annoying. <laughs> anyway, it should look like this after you're done. So it's sort of, uh, again, Anyway, it should look like this when it's done. So give it another sand, and you should get it quite smooth now. This is with the two, uh, 400 grit. Choose any color you like. I chose the Gloss Hot Lips Red, just because YouTube's red, so I'm fitting in. Contrary to what the newspaper says, do not do codeine. Anyway, I don't know anything about spray painting, but you're supposed to give it a few light coats. I didn't do that. Anyway, the next part to do this is obviously uploading the code to the ESP8266 microchip. All the links for everything here is in the description, so if you're curious, you can go to the description, you can go to my website, and all the details are nicely documented, so you can follow them. Basically, there are three things you need, four things maybe, your SSID, um, basically the password for it so you can access your um, Wi-Fi. You need to get an API key from Google. That's easily um, obtainable. Just go to Google, they'll explain it. I've got links for that. And the next things you want are to put these library URLs in the preferences page. Just watch this video how to do it. It's very simple. Download the board, download the libraries. So you have to search um, Arduino JSON to get the JSON library. It should be right there. As you can see, I've installed it. Now I'll just quickly show you what preferences I've got for my board. 
I've got 160 megahertz on and just a few simple things. Um, you can see 160 megahertz, whatever that is, whatever that is. Make sure it's plugged into the right com because that will save you some time. And choose the ESP um, node MCU chip. So they're all vital things you need. And if you're still watching, please subscribe to my channel. Um, I've had some great growth very recently and I love to keep it going. So thanks for everyone's support. Hit that subscribe button, like this video and show friends who might be interested and I'd be so thankful. So thanks for watching. But back to it. So once that's all done, you wanna upload it to the board, which takes a while. And this is what you see when you don't put in your SSID and Wi-Fi password. So make sure you put that in. But once you do put that in, it should nicely hit Google's APIs and you'll get back the subscribe, smiley, and how many subscribers you've got at the current time, which is pretty cool. So I think it updates every five seconds. You can change that to as fast as you like, but Google does not like spam, so don't set it under like 500 milliseconds or something. And now comes the fun part where we actually have to assemble the circuit. So you'll need a few parts for this. I recommend some connecting wires. Um, you'll need obviously the ESP8266 Wi-Fi chip, uh, this LED board. You don't need this one, but I use it because I have it lying around. This is, I think, 80 by 8. So it's got 80 LEDs with 8 LEDs height. Uh, you want to insert your chip into a breadboard and hook it up. Um, I've got the actual pin mappings in the code because it, it was always changing, so I wanted to keep it dynamic. Uh, so look at in the code. I've got the data sheets and everything in case you need those. So they're on my website in case you need a bit more help. I also recommend using a five volt power supply. This is very specific for my board, my LED board, so double check that, but you can see that wire sticking out the back. But double check and triple check your pins because that might be the point at which uh, troubleshooting is the longest. Now, once that's all done, feel free to hook it up and you should see a wait for Wi-Fi um, appear on the LED board. And eventually it hits the internet so you'll get back your subscriber count, which is awesome. So everything's working fine now. And eventually we roll into the assembling frame phase. We've done the code, we've done the circuit. Now it's just how pretty you want to present it, basically. You can see we've got our red play subscribe button right there. Now I've done a sort of cheap way. I've stuck some blue tack on the back so it actually adheres to the front of the glass, not behind it. This prevents bubbles from the paper um, and it gives it a nice sort of 3D effect. I also printed out the red um, play button with my channel name so that it looks a bit more professional on some paper that just matches the size of the frame. I think my specific frame was 13 inches wide by 11 high but you can get any frame size as big as you can fit in your circuit. And you want to sort of cut out a hole for the circuitry at the back. I did a sort of cheap way. Um, I recommend also probably soldering in the Wi-Fi chip into a proper um, board, not a breadboard, but I just want to get this up. So, so it's most certainly business at the front and party at the back, but it works. And all you need, or all I needed was some black to stop the light coming from the back and you've got yourself a live YouTube LED updating subscriber play button that's custom no one else has got this and it works really nice and I like it so if you'd like to be a green arrow on my frame please subscribe to my channel like this video share it with a friend thanks for watching my videos I hope you enjoy them I'll continue to make more see you next time